You know, my pa used to tell me, it's better to be a has-been than it never was. Oh, God. I run as quick as I can. My little legs can't go much quicker. Johnny, shoot him. Oh, God, he's right behind me. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, he's gonna get me. He go <laughs> I'm going to attempt to survive 100 days in hardcore Minecraft in the Wild West. With a whole new area to explore, new weapons, new enemies to tackle, our journey begins with me, the coffee fuel genius. Let's go. What's good? Get comfortable, grab your snacks, because we're going on a Wild West journey. I kicked off day one with the basics, collecting wood. Once I'd made the crafting table, I then went ahead and crafted the wooden tools I needed. But then I noticed I was being snuck up on by a wild dog. And there was no way I was dying on day one on our hardcore journey. So I decided to run as fast as I could in the opposite direction. I then spotted a temple, so I decided to go check it out. I made myself a sword and a pickaxe, chewed through the side and snuck in. I noticed there was a skeleton spawner there, so I decided I wasn't going to take it on, but I also noticed the dogs had stopped following me. So, I took advantage of the time and went ahead and got some food. There were a few goats scattered around, so I decided to chop them up and get myself some raw mutton. Mmm. I chewed through the raw mutton and continued. Uh, I don't even know what that was. I carried on collecting goat's meat because I'd need food for the rest of our journey. Then I headed out on day one. Wait a second. The dog had returned. The dog had returned with a friend and I didn't know what to do. If these wild dogs got hold of me, it would be completely over. The one had fleed, but one had carried on and hunting me down. So I just had to take it on. Three hearts of damage from one hit. This was dangerous. Psych! You think I was going to be taken down by some stupid dog? I striked him down. I chewed through the raw mutton and realized this hardcore journey wasn't going to be an easy one. So I located a nearby cave and got to work mining up some cobblestone because I'd make it a lot further with stone tools. Some serious progress made. This cave was serving me well. I carried on collecting cobblestone and then I just kind of worked my way down. I came across a bunch of random ores like uranium and lead, all things I could use to make machinery. I then went ahead and grabbed myself a bunch of coal because I could use coal to make torches and being down in this cave wasn't so fun in the dark. I came across a huge vein of iron which was perfect, one step closer to a full set of iron armour. The sun had set so I decided to stay in the cave for the night. Day 2 was here so I did a little bit of cave exploring and grabbed a bunch of iron and then made my way out of the cave as the sun had risen. I also realised rats attack you when the sun isn't fully up. Great, another enemy to fight. Just what I need. I then realised I had the full day ahead of me. So, it was time to do a bit of exploring. I had to get some food though as well because my health was really, really low. Nope. If you think for a single second I'm going to fight a grizzly bear with a stone sword, you're mad. I headed deeper into the badlands and came across some green nature filled area with goats. It was like food heaven. So I decided to make myself like a tiny little camp in the corner. I cooked up my food and then smelted up my ores and made myself some iron. Woohoo! I really wanted to make the projector to make automated machinery, but I just wasn't there yet. So instead I made myself a shield, a vital tool on a hardcore survival journey. I then went ahead and made myself an iron sword, but I didn't have enough resources to make a full set of iron armor. So I decided to head out, chop up some wood, and then go ahead and kill some cows because I needed the food for the journey. But then I was ambushed by a pack of wild dogs. I did my best to block the dogs' attacks, and then I created some distance between us to give me some time to calculate. <laughs> The fierce wild dogs were relentless and there was nothing I could do to stop them from attacking me. I tried to create some distance, but they just kept chasing me. And then things got serious. With just two and a half hearts left, I had no choice but to run away and try and create some height. The only thing I could do was use up the cobblestone I had in my inventory to create some height between me and the ravaging dogs. The savage wild dogs chased me up the mountains. I felt like there was no escape. I cracked a side in the mountain and created a small little vantage point. I think I was safe. So I cooked up the meat I had left and then smelted up my oars. I guess I'm here for the night. 
It was glorious to see the sunrise on day three. Whew. I can't believe we survived such a close encounter. I decided to head up and over the mountains. I stayed away from any enemies as much as I could. I created a bucket so I could get some more water. It's always good to have a bucket of water on you. I guess it was time to jump down this mountain. Whew, here goes nothing. And I died and, and the whole thing ended. And nah, I'm joking. I made it. I made it to the bottom of the mountain, and then I carried on my journey across the wildlands. I was hoping to find some civilization and also create that automated machinery I'd spoken about earlier. Day three, and I was really enjoying the foresty area that I was in. It was a nice, refreshing break from the wildlands. I also found a minecart chest with a bunch of blue lapis in, which was great. I also then came across a load of coal, which I mined up and then headed out across the wildlands. But once again, I was ambushed, but not just from dogs this time but also rats. The sun was setting and these guys turned evil. And as you can hear, they were chasing me and chasing me. I had no choice but to use my height tactic. I decided to create some distance between me and my foes. This was exhausting. Just three days in and this wasn't getting any easier. So I decided to stay here for the night. Day four and I was surrounded by horrific weather conditions, but I had no choice but to continue moving forward on our Wild West journey. Lightning striked and it was just too dangerous to stay above ground, so I took advantage and went into the caves to mine up some more ores. I wanted to get that machinery so I could make rifles, weapons and more. I came across some gold ore which was vital to making the projector. I then headed into bedrock level and yes, you guessed it. Finally, some diamonds. Some serious progress made on day five. I mined up these diamonds and had a total of six in my inventory. This was insane, so I decided to head back up. I wanted to keep the momentum going, so I looked out into the distance into the horse-ridden plains and headed deeper into the Wild West. I wonder what challenges lie ahead on this hardcore survival journey. Day eight and I was deep within the wildlands. I hunted for more food and I quickly realized I was lost. I tried to make a bed with the wool I collected, but it just didn't seem to work in the crafting table. So instead I made some shears to use on the sheep that were stuck up on this mountain with me, but it just didn't seem to work. But then I used the big brain and used the, the goat's wool and turned it into white wool. I don't know how that worked. But anyway, I made a bed and I got some sleep at the end of day eight. It was great to get a good night's rest, but I had to keep the ball rolling. I smounted up all of my iron ores, took out the dogs that were attacking me, and then made myself a full set of iron armor, and then crafted a diamond pickaxe. Look at us go! I then made my way down the mountain after cooking up some food. We had to keep moving forward. I finally escaped the dusty badlands and headed towards the desert plains, when finally I had spotted a village! Let's go! But then this happened. The fierce grizzly bear was colossal in stature, towering over me. His giant bear paws were striking me, taking huge health, and no amount of stake could save me. He was striking and striking, almost taking my life. I used my Obi-Wan-like instincts and managed to get the high ground, but he just climbed up. I really didn't know what to do. I just carried on striking and striking, trying to get close enough, and eventually... I succeeded. I killed the grizzly bear and taken his bear claw. I crawled over to the western town and the villagers healed me up. They even thanked me for eliminating the bear and freeing the village. They even rewarded me with the engineer's hammer. This would be crucial to making the revolver. I even grabbed myself a wooden storage crate which worked similar to a shulker box. Wow. I couldn't believe it, some serious progress made. I cleared up the area of enemies and got some sleep. Day 10 was here, it was time to head out and find somewhere to make camp. But then this happened. While heading to the Badlands, I found a nearby camper, but I was also being chased by wild dogs. They almost took my life, so I ran to the camper to see if he could help me out. And, to much surprise, he did. <coughs> This guy had saved my life, so we chatted for a little while, and I got to know him. Huh. 
He offered me a bunch of insane trades and then sent me on my way informing me of a location of a nearby camp. I headed over and got to know everybody. This is where I set up camp. I even tamed a hamster nearby because, well, I was kind of bored and, I mean, look, look how cute they are. Look at it. Oh, he's so cute. I put down all of the things I had in my inventory, spent the evening defending the camp, killing the foes that tried to kill us in our sleep. I decided to make a tent, stick it down, and get a good night's rest. Day 11 was here, so I spent it collecting wood, planting wheat seeds, because I wanted to build a place I could finally call home. Day 16 was here, and I finally finished my little western build. Considering I had barely any resources, I was happy with the turnout. I also need to get a flower for the little pot, because it's looking pretty empty. I also have a bunch of animals now, so things are looking good. Day 17 rolled around, and to get paper, I'd need that sugar cane. But what stood between me and the sugar cane were these snappy little beasts who kept jumping out from the ocean at me. I mean, look at this. Like, what, on what world does a piranha leap from the depths of the ocean to try and bite your legs off? I had to think on my feet, so I chewed up my meat and then made a bridge over it's about two blocks high i made it over the little lake and then i got my hands on that lovely little sugar cane and then i was an absolute moron and i fell off the bridge which like i was laughing the whole time i was doing this but also like like terrified as well like, i pooped my pants a little bit because i thought i was gonna die like can you imagine if i died to piranhas you know, flappy little monsters anyway i ignored them planted my sugar canes also some wheat seeds and then headed back and got a good night's rest Day 18, and I just realized cows have names. This one's called Angus. Hello, Angus. <laughs> uh, I, I smattered out all my ores and waited for the sugar canes to grow. And then I finally had enough to make one book, which then I combined with a lever. And yes, you guessed it. I finally had the engineer's manual. Woohoo! I could finally make the coke oven, which is crucial to progressing. To make the coke oven, I'd have to head out and get a bunch of resources, like sand, clay, so I could make bricks. So I kind of just did that, like dodging piranhas and, and got to work. This is fun. I'm, I'm loving it. After a good few days of dedication, I had more than enough resources to finally make the coke oven. I looked at the recipe book in the manual and then just got to crafting it. Uh, at first, I thought I didn't have enough when, in fact, actually, I, I had, like, way too much. Like, way too much. And then I just kind of bashed my hammer against the front because that's how engineering works. And I finally finished the coke oven, which was amazing. I made a bunch of buckets and then started to collect creosote oil so I could make treated wood, which is crucial to making the revolver. And speaking of the revolver, I'd have to make the engineer's workbench and a bunch of other items. This thing was not as straightforward as I thought. It was a bit of a pain in my backside, I won't lie. But I did remember that from the storage crate we'd found in the village earlier, there was a few things that would, like, speed up the process. Like a, like a blueprint and a few steel rods. It wasn't a lot, but I got to make the revolver barrel. It was good to get the ball rolling. I then grabbed some creosote oil and got some sleep. While the Wild West slept, I was thinking about how I could kill the Ender Dragon with a revolver. Day 26 and it was time to get a wiggle on. I soaked all of my wooden planks in creosote oil, making them treated wood planks, which would allow me to construct the engineer's workbench. I built it outside in this really like quickly accessible thing and then it was time to make bullets. I was making huge progress. I grabbed the blueprint and then had a look at what I'd need to make the cartridges. It was pretty straightforward actually, big progress. All right, partner. Day 27 was here and I smattered up all my ores and then made myself a couple of wooden grips for the revolver, which was huge. I then like forgot how to make the wooden casings, which was like kind of funny. So I checked the book and then I made a bunch of bullets for the revolver, which, which was huge. I know I didn't have a revolver yet, but it was nice to have the ammo there. I wonder what tomorrow would bring. Fresh-faced and bright-eyed, day 28, I headed into a strip mine. Everything was cooking back at home, and so I thought it was time to get some diamonds. I tore through chunky cobblestone for a good few days and found myself a bunch of diamonds. I was collecting these bad boys left, right, and center. I even found some emeralds, which was like a pretty big bonus. And then decided to head back to see if I had enough to make full diamond armor. 
I made it home and you guessed it. I constructed a full set of diamond armor. Day 43 was a bit more of a chilled one. I tended to my little farm, my animals, and then I thought I'd head into my strip mine because I wanted to grab obsidian. I was pretty determined to make that nether portal, so I just dedicated a lot of time to collecting obsidian. And then I tried to like look cool for the video and place things with both hands, but like, I was holding obsidian. Look, I placed obsidian. Like, I messed up. I was so annoyed. Like, do you know how long this thing takes to like mine? I know it's not that long, but it's just a bit of a pain in my backside. I then headed back to get some sleep because the next day I wanted to make the nether portal. So. I gathered a bunch of resources, made a flint and steel, headed to the area where I'd build it, and yep, you guessed it, got to work. The build was complete, I sparked up that flint and steel and opened a portal to the underworld. I made a secret room as well behind in this weird terracotta tower, I don't know. I then killed a bunch of endermen to grab some ender pearls because I'd need that to progress to the ender dragon. I then wanted to make the crude blast furnace, but to make that, well you need blaze powder and for that, you guessed it, we're heading into the nether. I was so nervous, it could all end here. As I stepped into Hell's Gates, I was greeted with sweltering conditions. This place was terrifying. I could hear gas screaming in the distance. I quickly encased my nether portal in protection, grabbed some nether rack, and headed deeper into the nether. I trudged through nether rack for days, traversing over the sea of lava, making my way very carefully around corners. But what awaited me was something far more dangerous than I could have ever imagined. It was a nether fortress, enriched in blazes, firing their fireballs towards me. I used my shield and diamond sword to take them out. I was hoping to collect some blaze rods, but the first one, ah, I'd lost it. I just had to carry on fighting. I was attacked by waves and waves of blazes. I didn't know what to do. One fired their fireball, and all I had was defense. After fighting the blazes for ages, I headed back home with the blaze rods. I had to make it back quickly. I had finally made it home. Blaze rods, ready to go. Day 67 was here, and I was ready to make the crew blast furnace, but I had to let everything cook first. So, in the meantime, I planted some sugar canes, you know, smashed up some iron ingots into steel plates, and went out and killed some endermen. You know, I was just sort of doing, like, little jobs here and there, killed more endermen. What the hell? I then finally constructed the crude blast furnace. I built it outside my house, slapped my hammer on the front, you know the drill, and then finally made myself some steel ingots, which was, which was a pretty big deal, to be fair. That's big progress. I then killed some more endermen, and then, you guessed it, I constructed the revolver. Look at me, I feel like a real cowboy. Hey, howdy, partner, I'm a cowboy. Who got the gun and stuff? You know? And then, like, day 74, I, like, a rat stole my revolver. Can you imagine after all that hard work? Like, I'd lost it. Anyway, back to being cool, back to being cool. Well, I shoot the dog, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I made a bow and put the bullets in the thing and killed stuff. Yeah, and then I went and killed some endermen. And, and, <laughs> anyway, enough of that. I headed deeper into the Wild West. God, look how cool this revolver is, like, BAM! And the bear was dead in like three, four shots, that's insane. I then spoke to a local camper, got a good night's rest, and then sold some emeralds for a pouch, which then I'd store the ender pearls I collect while I go out. Killed more stuff with my revolver, and then just kind of spent my time taking out endermen, grabbing those ender pearls, you know, making big progress. I then realized I was running out of time, so I guess it was time to go and face that ender dragon. I had big plans for my little area. I know I hadn't built a lot so far, but I was hoping in my 200 days to make the enchantment table and build some big stables. I, I had huge plans. I was really excited. I got a good night's rest, ready for the big day. I threw my first eye of ender. And so there it was, the first eye of ender, guiding me in the direction I needed to go. I headed deep into the wild west. I made my way over huge piranha infested waters and then traveled up giant mountains. This was a challenge in itself. I continued following those eyes, heading into different biomes. The blazing sun was scorching.
I traveled for days on end trying to find that stronghold, fighting different enemies. I eventually came to this location, but it was underwater and I, I was going to drown. So I found a nearby cave and like mined sideways inwards, mining down deeper and deeper. When eventually I came to those mossy cobblestone walls, I had found the stronghold. Now it was time to find that portal. I navigated the maze-like corridors in the stronghold. I found a couple of chests here and there with the ender pearls in, but I just couldn't seem to find the end portal. I killed creepers and cooked up some food and then I finally found it, eliminating the silverfish spawner. I then placed the eye of enders in. This was the moment I take on the ender dragon. I was so nervous, I couldn't wait to kill this thing with the revolver. It was time to jump in. I was here, in the end. I took out the first tower with my bow. Incredible accuracy. I tried to take a shot at the dragon with my revolver. Okay. Um. This is going to be really hard to watch. And, um. I, I actually, like, teared up a little bit while I did this as well. Because after hours and hours of work, this happened. I'm just going to let the clip play out. But I warn you, it's not fun. Yep, so shooting the revolver attracts every single enderman in the end. Like, how was I meant to know? I, I was livid. I took a look in spectator mode at everything I'd built so far. I had so much planned for this. Like, even my animals were left all alone. I guess I just have to move on. So I made it to the hundredth day and well, the revolver decided to do me dirty. <laughs> what a plot twist. So annoying. If you guys think I should try again, you could comment below. I really enjoy making this for you guys. I now have a Twitch, Twitter and Instagram that will all be linked in the description below. As always, I'm the Coffee Fuel Genius. Peace, love and positivity, baby. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.